this Proof of God series has been a lot of fun to go through. And I got to be honest, it's pretty cerebral information. So I know that some people are like, whoa, this is some heavy stuff. And there's a little bit more of that today, but we're going to get through it together. And I think you're going to like this because I'm giving you, I wanted to today give you tools you can use when you're talking to someone about your faith when they bring up science. Because I, I find that they say the same things over and over again. So I've just kind of learned how to deal with that and how to really bring new information to them. And so that's what I want to talk about a little bit today. Last, when we started the series two weeks ago, we, we talked about the Big Bang Theory and how that points to a God and, and that God must have started off the universe. And then last week we debunked evolution, which is really the only alternative to a God uh, being the founder and the creator of the world. And so we debunked that last week. And today I'd like to give what I believe is my favorite, most compelling evidence that I have seen recently. In well, when you breathe in, what do you breathe in? You breathe in oxygen. Then what do you breathe out? Carbon dioxide. Then plants breathe in what? Carbon dioxide. What do they breathe out? Oxygen. So if a plant didn't exist, could man live? No. If man didn't exist, could plants live? No. They both need each other. Man can't live without plants. Plants can't live without humans. Well, well what does the Bible say about dinosaurs? Well, the Bible does talk about dinosaurs. Because sometimes people say, well, you know, we know there was dinosaurs, and the Bible doesn't talk about dinosaurs, so therefore the Bible's not accurate. Actually, the Bible does talk about dinosaurs. It talks about dinosaurs in the oldest chronological book in the Bible, which is the book of Job. Um, it says in Job that, they, that God could threaten them, that God is the only one that could take them out. So I believe God did, because since we don't see him anymore. Having said that, I believe that the simplest way to explain that dinosaurs would no longer exist is this. There's no reference to dinosaurs being loaded on that ark. Well, we know the earth is old because of carbon dating is what they typically refer to. Carbon dating is how they try to add va the value of time to the layers of the earth. A freshly killed seal was carbon dated as having died 1,300 years ago. You ever seen the picture that they show you in textbooks where they have like the layers of the earth, right? And they go all the way down to its core and they got different colors and they, they have like this age and then that age and they give you like this millions of years ago and this millions of years ago. You know what that picture represents? It represents a picture. Did you know right now that California is losing nine feet a year? So if the earth is 350 million years old, did you know that America, based upon nine feet of erosion a year, would have been underwater in 1.6 million years? Genesis 1, in the beginning, he created the heavens and the earth. Can't you just see him packing it in? Starting with this little ball that he's going to put a lot of love into and create you and me. That sounds exactly like what a God would do that created the universe just perfect for us. Even scientists call our planet the privileged planet. We find a whole dinosaur just sitting there. But then guess what they don't find? They don't find any plants. How is a dinosaur supposed to be in this layer that represents a million years or more and there's no plant life for it to eat? Maybe today's a tough day for you because for so long you trusted in the supposed evidence that we were created from gases and masses somehow, when the truth is the exact opposite of that. Isn't God good? His word is so true.